we go. A little bit of blues for you. That was actually the backing track to um, Have You Ever Loved a Woman by Freddie King. Um, picked back a bit of Freddie King because uh, Freddie King's pretty famous for uh, gold top Les Pauls, at least before he started playing 335s. Anyway, so who we got looking at? Hello, Charlotte from the kitchen. Hiya, James. Hello, Mark Howes. She, Sheila, yes, from the Crooked Spire Town. Derek Thompson, hello, Derek. How are you doing? Easy like Tuesday afternoon, yes. It is quite easy. It's easy to stay indoors these days. Hi, Wayne. I hope all's well with you. Hello, Henry from Riverside, CA. I assume that's, what's that, California? Um, Derek, hi from the UK. I'm in the UK, Derek, so we're, we're in the same country, at least. Hello, um, uh, Ruth, Julie, and uh, Julian and Jenna, I assume you're all watching. Um, and Leith, hello. Hello, Julie. Oh, everyone's watching. So how are you all doing? Hope it's all um, all okay for you there. You're all staying safe and haven't been um, put in jail yet for leaving your house. Um, risky business these days. So today episode, God, which one is this one? Is this episode seven? I've forgotten already. Let's have a look and count them. One, two, three, four, four, five, six. I think this is actually episode eight. I think I got it wrong. I think I put down episode seven, but it might well be eight guitars now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yes, in fact, an error there. This is number eight in my 42 guitars. We're getting, hello. Um, so we're, hi, Dad. I'm assuming that's Jasmine. I think Jaden's still upstairs playing drums. Um, so yeah, this is uh, number eight of the 40 guitar, 42 guitars. This one is, thank you, Wayne. Yes, it is eight. I, I wrote down seven. Uh, for some reason, I, I'm sort of well behind in what numbers there are there. Um, I'm losing count. It's very easy for me to lose count. So this is, um, a, it's not a Les Paul, actually. It's a, a Tokai. So we, we'll have a look at this. Have a look at that. That is a Tokai Love Rock. I hope you can hear me okay, because I'm not hearing this mic very well. So hopefully you're uh, you're all able to hear what's going on here. So let me know if there's a problem. If you can't if you can't hear me, oh, Jaden's now in the shower. I have to say he, he does need to get in the shower. He's been playing drums for the last hour and it smells up in the loft like you wouldn't believe. Um, so yes, it is old age when that um, I can't keep count. So yes, it's a Tokai love rock. Basically, the when Tokai started, um, that is thank you, Joe. It is definitely a guitar. Um, you would know, I'm sure. Um, so this is a, a Tokai Love Rock. Uh, Tokai started making copies back, I, I'm, no, I'm no historian, but back in the 70s. Um, uh, and basically this was originally called, I think, a Les Paul Reborn, this model. And obviously Gibson got rather upset with them using the same headstock shape and Les Paul Reborn. And so they changed it to Love Rock. Um, so Tokai made tons of, um, there's lots of sort of people who made copies back in the um, in the 70s and 80s. Ibanez made a bunch of copies, Tokai, um, Greco, and people like that. So they basically made um, these kind of things. And they were quite, a lot of them were actually really accurate. And this one is sort of, um, what should we say? It, it's called, well, they, a lot of people know them as lawsuit guitars, which basically means that they look so much like the original guitars, the um, headstock being a Gibson shape rather than sort of like a different shape. So if you go and buy a Tokai, um, after that period. This one is in, from 1981. If you buy it much after that, you'll find that it's um, a different shape headstock because they didn't look of people using their headstock shapes. But this is a, um, a really nice example of a copy. It's actually really rare as well. You really have a job finding one of these things. So I looked for ages to find one. So I finally managed to find a... There's, there's quite a lot of um, humbucker uh, talk eyes back in the 80s but this one was a, a 56 a copy of a 50 56 les paul so gold top p90s so it's a pretty rare guitar um and it's uh what can i say as i say hard to find if you can get one but it is a very nice guitar um it's quite heavy um like most of the les pauls around that time it's actually not as heavy as my i've got a couple of these gold top les pauls and it's not as heavy as those but it is still pretty heavy um I don't have a 56 Les Paul to compare it to, but um, apparently they're, they're pretty close. The construction's not quite the same, so I'm sure any Gibson fanatic would be able to tell me how, what the differences are between them. Um, when I got this, it had Gibson pickups in it. 
um, and I swap those out as, as usual. I swap them out for a set of bare knuckle pickups, um, P90 obviously, and I think it's a blue note, a blue note P90 in the neck, as in the neck from a P90 set in the neck, but on the bridge, a bit of a weird one because I, I like to mix and match my pickups, and I've been mucking around with them. Um, uh, with the strength of the pickups, and so basically, I've um, I have put a, a neck pickup from it for from a set of stock homes. So in other words, it's quite a, the stock home P90 set. It's quite a powerful set of pickups. But I thought that the for me in my particular taste, I thought the stock home was just a little bit hot. Uh, the bridge from the Stockholm set was a bit hot, so I got a neck pickup from the Stockholm and stuck it in the bridge position. So it's rather than being about 15k, it's more like 12 ish. And um, that was just a little bit nicer for me to put that in the um, bridge position, and it seems to work really well for this guitar. I always, for some reason, I've, I've got to the point where if I buy a like a bridge for, for a guitar, it tends to have to be sort of almost double. The strength of the neck pickup to, for it to, for me to be happy with it. I'm not saying everybody um, should go out and do that, but um, for me, it actually sounds really good. If you have a, you know, a taste for your bridge pickup to be quite um, quite fat in comparison. Because if I put it on a clean sound, Stick it on the back. So it sounds pretty fat and sort of um, drives everything quite nicely along. Whereas the front one doesn't do that. The stick it on the back, you've got more of a. So it's a bit more gainy. <clears throat> I always think that P90s actually have quite a, a raw tone that you can't really use for everything. I don't sort of. Um, <laughs> They're sort of quite, that's quite smooth on the front pickup, but there's such a different sound. So like the bridge, bridge P90 is a really, really raw sound. Um, and, uh, so it definitely sounds a bit, um, definitely a bit fat, but a bit raw too. It's not a smooth sounding pickup at all. sound on that back pickup um andy pennington yeah i um i do really like the sound of it i must admit i'm not much of a 335 player i do prefer this um, this tone and um, the guitar <laughs> definitely sort of like covers more ground i think anyway but just has that sort of nice fat fat sound <laughs> So I've made a few changes to the guitar. Um, as I say, I've moved the pickups out for um, a set of bare knuckles. Again, Stockholm neck uh, in the bridge and a uh, blue note um, neck in the neck. Um, changed out the um, controls as well. What I always do with all of my Les Pauls, Les Pauls I used, uh, do quite a few, um, quite a 
refuse that I just don't they're just set up in the lot of doing not a great deal um, but the ones I actually want like to use live I, I don't like um, the, the Gibson layout at all um, really don't like the volume volume tone tone thing because I like the um, uh, I like the telecaster way of doing things which is a master volume and a master tone so basically what I've done with with most of my Les Pauls is that this knob here is the volume control for the whole guitar so if I stick it on like the middle pickup that covers everything so whatever pickup you want that covers the whole lot and this one is the, is the, is the tone for everything and this one does nothing at all and this one does nothing at all so basically these are completely disconnected and that's the volume and that's the tone so um you ever pick one of these guitars up you have to sort of um get used to it a little if you're used to a gibson um style thing so volume tone nothing nothing um what are the changes you can't make a huge amount of changes to a um to gibson's to be fair I've left the um, tuners are all exactly how they were. So if you look on there, you see on the back there, there's the a little stick on number and a serial number on the back. So number 70, which I think was a, how much it cost. Um, it's like a pricing thing, as I understand. Um, but nothing else has changed. Oh yes, I did. I changed all the pots out. So the pots have been changed completely. Actually, it had this in it. it had these? I don't like these horrible wiring looms that sort of, you stick straight into the guitar. Gibson started doing these, I think, fairly recently as well, again. But basically, these um, this was in there when I got it, and I bought some nice um, capacitors uh, and um, tone uh, potentiom potentiometers from Bare Knuckle and stuck um, all new stuff in there to, so it sounded nice and um, nice and well, like it should, basically. These these things, I mean, they were they was okay, but the sweep on the volume control, I really like a nice um, even sweep on that volume control, um, and it not to sort of lose a lot of top end. So if you sort of knock back these volume controls, you get it cleans up very nicely. Whereas I didn't on those ones, they were sort of, it was either all or nothing. You had it on 10 and it was really loud. You had it on sort of eight and it was almost nothing. So Ross, Stephen, 42 guitars, how greedy, and you don't even do custom shops. I do have a custom shop. I will be showing my custom shop off um, at some point, but I do have um, I do have a custom shop strap up in the loft as ever. Um, what guitar would I yet like to own? Um, I don't. I don't really know, to be honest. I've got quite, I've got pretty much got most decent versions of most of the guitars that I like. Um, possibly, I think if I if I wanted to have something more, I think it would probably probably be something sort of um, slightly off the wall, like a um, uh, like a Music Man, I suppose, something like that. I quite like the um, the look of the Valentines Music Man. They look like they'd be quite sort of handy to um, to play. But um, I have to say, I'm fairly happy with the collection. I don't get a chance to play 42. <clears throat> I've almost got, you know, if I do like sort of a guitar a week, maybe I could get to the point where I've got 52 guitars. I could play one each week, you know. Have a different, different guitar each week. Yeah, for gigs. So basically, this is a... Um, Oh, I did borrow a truss art, actually, Ross. I used one on the um, on the new album. Actually, make, makes you stronger. There's um, one of the one of the I think it was Backbone, the solo in that. I played the solo in Backbone with the truss art. Um, Telecast. I don't. I can't remember the model of it, but um, Sam Atkins, um, Charles cousin, he very nicely lent me the um, the truss art Telecaster. Can't remember what model it is, but he may know, so he can drop in and just mention that. I should just tell you as well is that the um, the overdrive I'm using today it's quite a, um, a well-known pedal but I've had a, a good friend of mine um, diatonic dude has, uh, has modded the pedal for me um, I'm not gonna say what it is 
I'm going to keep that a secret. But if you like the sound. So this guitar mixed with that pedal, <clears throat> who gives me tone envy. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, I should talk about the reason why I bought one of these guitars in the for first place, because who gives me tone envy? I think um, the fact that Sean Costello, is, uh, who's one of my favorite guitarists, gets like a really, really nice tone. Um, I can't ever really seem to get hit the tone he gets very easily. It's very sort of classically vintage blues tone. And um, every time I try and go for anything like that, I always end up sounding a bit, I don't know, not quite what I would hope it would be. But Sean Costello is the only reason, the only reason I have a Les Paul at all. Um, and uh, three of them, so I just like gold tops. So basically the reason I have a gold top P90 in the first place is because of Sean Costello. Um, and uh, I'll I'll finish at, off actually with a Sean Costello number. Um, because uh, that's a big influence there. Um, just been recording that today. I'm going to be sticking that up on the uh, YouTube, I think, a bit later. Um, right, before I um, say goodbye to all of you, let's show you a little riff, a little lick, I mean. Can you get those two mixed up? Very easy to do. Um, so this is um, the, if you look in 42 Guitars stuff or picks, or I think it's called 42 Guitars Licks folder in my Facebook um, my Facebook folder. It's got um, one I've just uploaded called Two Way Tomfoolery. Um, and Two Way Tomfoolery just basically is the ending of a 12 bar in C. Which is one of those classic endings to it where you finish off and what you play with this chord is C to G. Uh, to G. So it's basically just a descending and ascending pattern. It's going to go. Like so. Like so. So you're basically just going. On that string from the D, from the um, eighth down to the fifth. And then you're going from the fifth up to the eighth on the other string. And then you're going from the, uh, what's that? It's a G sharp nine. Hello, Ollie. Actually, I should point out that Ollie, um, the other thing I had done with the guitar is, is uh, get it refretted. So Ollie, again, another one that he's um, refretted for me with big old frets. I um, I think the neck needs a little bit of looking at because I, this guitar, although uh, much as I love it, there's a definite problem at the moment, I think, with the neck. has shifted a little bit. Maybe the truss rod is... Um, come loose or something. The refret's really good. Um, what it is is that there seems to be, there's actually quite a lot of buzz behind the fret. So when you're playing behind it, you get a lot of twang. So when I'm playing it, it doesn't, it sounds really nice, but it has a weird feel when you play it. You can sort of feel the strings rattling behind it. So uh, I think that needs to look at. So I will be, um, another one I might drop off with Ollie at some point to have a little look at that. Um, so, where was I? Yeah, so that little lick I was playing, so. So all it is is just dropping down. You can do it however you like. I was going to go. But you can do whatever. So when you finish up. So it's just a nice little um, to play. So your little fingers on the um, eighth on the D, first finger, and then you just swap them around each time. One goes up, one goes down. I do like finishing off at uh, 12 bar like that. Let's um, 
Let's have a look. Anything else I can think of with this guitar? It's beautiful. Um, has a few little sort of. It, it's actually, I mean, for a 1981, that's some. Um, so it's 40, thought was it 39 years old. Um, so basically, it's in, it's actually, in, I think, incredibly good nick for for a guitar of this age. If anything, I'd wish it was in a bit more of a state because I would um, be okay with it. It's got like a little bit of wear just just there. Um, and there's like a lot of wear on the nickel on the bridge itself. So you can see sort of right down here, sort of worn away. But other than that, it's actually in really good shape. Um, you know, which isn't always a great thing for me. I tend to like things to look a bit more their age. Um, but I think I can put up with that for the sake of it. So I'm going to play, before I finish off, a little tune. I am... Um, I've been doing some backing tracks recently just for the sheer hell of it. And um, so I did a, a Chris Stapleton backing track. Actually, that was not quite for the sheer hell of it. I think um, Sarah asked me for one of those. Um, and so while I had it all going, um, I thought I would make myself a backing track for um, Any Time You Want um, by Sean Costello. So uh, if you like the backing track, you want to uh, purchase any backing tracks, I'm basically up for doing any any backing tracks that you need. So in other words, if there's something you can't find, <clears throat> like a specialist sort of guitar backing track, um, can't find it on iTunes or any other place on the uh, interweb, then just let me know and I will be quite happy to make a track for you because I wanted to do this particular song. But unfortunately, it was the backing track was nowhere to be found. So I decided that I would do it myself. So I... This morning, I decided to sit down, get the drums programmed, and get the bass sorted, and um, so I could do the song and use it as a backing track in future. So if you need one, let me know. I just need to set up a, um, a microphone because this um, this head mic is not the best for singing into. Um, as you probably figured out when I did a song earlier this uh, this week, uh, last week, whenever it was. So I'm going to just transfer the mics over. To this one, uh, I think we're there. No, that's not it. There I am. Seven. Me, 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 me. There you go. I can hear that. Right. So, a bit complicated because I've got to play this. I've got to play this. I've got to plug the microphone in. I've got to turn the other one. At the same time and then play the songs but what i will do i will first of all turn this one off so that's going off and i should be you should still be able to hear me through this one which is good all right so i'm there with a bit of reverb i'm gonna do hopefully you can hear that so it's a song um as i say it's by um sean costello big hero of mine excellent player very sad that he's died um, died at, I think, what was he, 20, 28. But um, an amazing player. So if you're interested in sort of um, learning about a player, if you haven't heard of him, I very much suggest you go and um, you go and have a listen because he's an awesome, awesome guitarist. So this is called Anytime You Want. I'll be back possibly tomorrow. It depends on my situation, whether I fall over again. Um, hopefully I won't. <clears throat> Thanks ever so much for listening, guys. I will um, sh please share this video, by the way, if you if you know anyone who'd be interested. Um, I am going to hopefully <laughs> get this right by starting off. So any time you want. Your honey, you got my gold. I got your number, little girl. 
Thanks for listening. I'll see you next.